Hi, I'm Gary. Three days ago I went to a market and I bought a jackfruit. It weighs 3.83 pounds. I'm going to cut it up and process it and I'll talk about what I do with it. Jackfruit is one of my favourite fruits. It's kind of got a banana, pineapple sort of, sort of flavour to it. And I like buying them cut up because if you buy a whole jackfruit you can't really see how ripe they are and a lot of this inside is going to be kind of wasted like the core and the rind is a waste but you can eat the fruit around the seeds these are actually arils They're, it's a compound flower or compound fruit so these were individual flowers that were pollinated that produced the fruit the seeds are edible what I'm looking for is the fruit itself. Seeds, you can Google it and find out what you can do with that. I generally don't eat the seeds. I generally plant them. I've been growing jackfruit in Southern California for three years now. And I started my original plants by seed. So when I take this apart, I'm going to plant the seeds and I'll show you how I do that. You know what, what might be good to tell the people too is you can't always find them at any supermarket. You actually have to sometimes hunt down either an Asian market or a specialty market. Yeah, if I look for them, I'm not going to find them in a regular grocery store. I bought this one at a Korean grocery store. It's actually a chain. It's on the East Coast and, the, and also the West Coast. And they know that they can sell fruits that aren't just Korean fruits because the Koreans aren't that big on them. They're probably getting more used to it now, but this would be sold to other Southeast Asians. They, they're smart because they cut the fruit up, and I like buying it when it's cut. What I look for in a jackfruit, I've, the first thing I do is feel around the bumps. If it's underripe, the bumps will be sharp and sort of pointy, and as it ripens up, the bumps on the outside will kind of round off. You also go for the smell because the smell smells a lot like juicy fruit bubble gum. And I know Robbie's not big on the flavour of it because it can be a little sickly sweet. But I really like it. What I'll do is I'll take this apart and these little arils I'll store in the fridge. There are some Asian markets that we've been to, like the Vietnamese markets that we went to. They actually remove the arils and sell them in like blister packs and that's a really good way of buying them because you're not buying all the excess latex and material that you donate. So yeah and they gave you like 30 40 pounds of waste that time what? for you to compost you yeah. were like so excited they were so excited too. Yeah when I bought bought some jackfruit from this Vietnamese market they gave us a lot of composting material, all their scraps. I was happy to get the extra scraps. So you would suggest that, especially first time buying them, get it when it's cut up, because you can end up with a whole one, like a bad watermelon, you, and then you, it's waste, and the whole thing yeah, is no it's good. Waste. If you are going to use the fruit part as a vegan substitute for um, meat, which people do, I would go for maybe one that doesn't taste as sweet, maybe an underripe one would be fine, but I really look for ripe ones. Now this one was more yellow when I first picked it up, but because it was sort of rounded off on the outside, that those little bumps were rounded, I chose this one. There were others that were kind of this orangey colour, but I figured I'd get one that was partially ripe let it ripen for a few days before I cut into it. So now you're going to unwrap it and so they wrap it in plastic and right. it can last I guess for days in the house when you first bring it home? Yes. Don't want to leave it too long or it can rot, long, right? Yeah, you, this is probably as long as I would leave it. Which was? Which was three days. If you have an issue with latex, I don't know if you would want to be eating jackfruit, but you would also want to be wearing gloves. I don't have a problem with latex, so I can sort of just open it up with my hands. When it's ripe, it's a lot easier to peel. 
I'm going to interrupt you to say that I am standing eight, ten feet from you, and you just popped that thing open, and we're outside, and that sweetness, I can smell the aroma. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, it's too sweet for my taste. It's probably an acquired taste, and yeah, it's this, this sweet. This one's very ripe. In fact, this part on this side is starting to go. But what I'll do is I'll put the fruit in one bowl and weigh that. And I'll put the stuff that I'm going to discard in the other bowl. There's actually a lot of waste to jackfruit, isn't there? Yeah, there is. So when you buy a whole fruit, you're getting really... I mean, the seeds you don't eat. You, you can eat the seeds. They're like any nut. You can cook them. If you Google it, you'll find out ways of eating it. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Like the cut pieces, I will probably eat the cut pieces. Some of the bigger cut pieces, like that one, that may actually germinate. Hmm. The seeds are very viable. Now, these are being grown in southern Mexico now, and on the, at least in southern California, most of the fruit that I'm finding has been grown from in Mexico. Probably why you can walk into a lot of Mexican markets now and find them there too. Yes, Mexican markets, Asian markets, they're the ones that if you're looking for it, that would be the place I would start. And it is a messy process to dismantle a jackfruit. So you're actually eating the yellow part. Yellow part. And it tastes like pineapple, banana, bubblegum? Yeah, it smells like juicy fruit bubblegum. It kind of tastes like juicy fruit bubblegum. So this is the fruit part and that is the seed part. And that, that seed, that's going, chances are every, almost every seed will germinate. And do you know how many years it takes till the tree actually grows fruit? Yeah, it could be anywhere between five and ten years. So it's something that you'd have to be patient with, and it's kind of a long-term project. So but, it's go on. So it's actually kind of like growing an avocado tree. You would have to graft it. You may not get fruit, or if you do get fruit, it's like an avocado tree I had growing in a house once. It took 20 years. So no, it took 15 years so it had its first fruit. But with this, it would be more for the fun of growing a plant, really. Because they grow good here, don't they? Yeah, they, a lot of people don't realize that you can grow them in Southern California. We're in Sunset Zone 23. You can grow them in Sunset Zone 22. There are people in the Vietnamese community that grow them. But a lot of people don't really know that much about growing them. So when I did research Four years ago when I started thinking about growing them, I had nowhere I could find information on them. Now they grow them in southern Florida, so people think you can only grow them in southern Florida. But you can grow them in southern California. They do produce fruit in southern California. You may have to hand pollinate them. I don't know whether you do or you don't. Usually an insect will pollinate them. That would be like dragon fruit. You have to really hand pollinate too. Yeah, like dragon fruit. I'm not saying you pollinate it the same way, but in order to really get dragon fruit, you're supposed to really hand pollinate those yeah. too. There is a possibility now that we've got our garden up and running, that we've got enough insects that will pollinate it. My pineapple guava, I used to have to hand pollinate, and the past couple of years, I don't have to pollinate it anymore. So we've got some sort of insect that's moved in that's doing the pollination for us. You can really smell this fruit. You can smell the sweetness. Yeah, this is the latex part, a lot of this, that's not edible. And is that around the skin part? Let me see if I... Yeah, that's around the skin. 
and the yellow part is the part you eat, which has got the seed inside. And you can, I, like you said, I've seen them in the Korean markets, I think, where they had them just these parts. Yeah, the Vietnamese market. Okay, and they had them in plastic trays. Yes. In the Garden Grove area of California, there are these mini malls, and a lot of those places have stores that like small markets where you can buy it already cleaned up and packaged. Yeah, this is a pretty messy business. Is it sticky? Yeah, it's sticky. If you try to do this when it's underripe, it'll be more glue-like. It'll be more latex. But this is... I'm. Sappy? I, this is sappy, but it's it'll come off my hands very easily. But if it's underripe, it'll just stick to your hands like, I'm trying to think, it's, it'll be more like a glue, but... Like a rubber cement? Yeah, like a rubber cement. Okay. Exactly. Okay, that's right. I think you did it once and you had to rub it off like rubber cement. Yeah. See, they're related to ficus or the fig figs, and we've got a ficus elastica or Indian rubber plant, a huge one growing in our yard, that's related to that. And these seeds just pop right out once you get them started. I haven't tried the seeds, maybe so, I'd like the seeds. Yeah, so if you want to get the seeds out it's just a matter of opening them up like that and I'll just, they'll pop right out. So the only thing you can do with jackfruit, this is a question because I don't know, is eat it? Can you juice it? Can you do something else with jackfruit? Or uh, yeah. There must be recipes for jackfruit. Yeah, there's... I guess you'd cut it up make fruit salad. Where you can you make can a, put it in a fruit salad. You can cut it up, make fruit salad. What I was talking about earlier is because this is kind of fibrous, people turn this into like vegan taco meat. They'll take this and shred it, and this makes a substitute for taco meat. Like ground, it's, like ground beef. It makes well, it's stringy, like um, I'm oh, like sh shredded beef. Like shredded beef, yeah. If you put taco seasoning on an unripe one, I would imagine that you'd get the texture without the sweet flavour. Now I'm not sure what that weighs. That's almost two pounds. Not quite. Same thing. Pretty pretty equal. Almost okay, two okay. almost two pounds. Almost two pounds. Again that's got all the nuts and seeds yeah, in so it. So basically half of it, it so I paid let's see. I paid a dollar twenty nine a pound. So if you take away that it's it's actually two six two fifty eight a pound for the edible part, and that's why if you didn't want to grow this, you should eat it because that's edible, and this is the part that I like is the fruit part, and it's really good. I'll take your word for it. Like I said, it's an acquired taste. I've tried it a couple times. It's chewy. Isn't it chewy? It's yeah, it's chewy. Very chewy. Now to, to germinate the seeds, I just take a wet paper towel and I put a few of them in. And that, that one's sliced, so I'll eat that. That one's sliced as well. Pop one out of here. And I just take a wet paper towel, fold them in, and this isn't saturated wet, it's just damp. And I put it in a Ziploc bag and I'll set that to one side, kind of in a dark, warm room. Once they start to germinate, then I plant them in pots. How long does it take usually? Do you know? Do you remember? It, it should take less than a week, I'm going to say. 
a week to 10 days, it should start to germinate. You do need to plant them as pretty much as soon as you get them out. You can't allow them to dry. So once you remove them from the, the fruit, that's when you plant them. If you leave them in the fruit, you can put these in the fridge for a, a few days. I, I would keep these probably in the fridge for maybe five days if they make it to five days. And then I've planted the seeds and the seeds have done okay. I wouldn't keep them in the fridge long term and I wouldn't freeze them, but they're okay in the fridge for five days and they'll still germinate. So that holds true with most fruit trees, where vegetables you can collect the seeds, dry them, but a lot of fruit trees itself you cannot. You have to take the seed, like oranges, apples, directly out of the fruit and plant it immediately. Yeah. People t have a tendency to think that they can collect seeds, put it away, and then plant it, and then they wonder why they don't germinate. Well, a lot of seeds, the whole reason that the fruit's there is to give the seed something to feed on until it germinates. And in the tropics, this would be germinating pretty much as soon as it fell off the tree. I guess it would rot into the ground. Animals would carry p bits and pieces of it away. Yeah, I could imagine an animal grabbing a large jackfruit, like this This one was 3.83 pounds, so that's multiply that by four, because this was a quarter. You know, that's a big fruit. Yeah, it's over 12 pounds. Over 12 pounds. Some of them can get quite heavy. Well, that's really cool. Now people know how to open it. They know how to eat it. If they have an, a, an allergy to any type of latex, they better find out if they can eat it. But definitely don't use, you know, you, use, don't use your hands. Use gloves if you want to open it. Yeah. And they can plant it. Even if they don't get a tree out of it, they'll get a beautiful plant. And if they do get a tree, I have no idea what they're gonna, where they're going to put such a big tree. It's a big tree. It is a big tree. Because it's in the ficus family, I wouldn't put it near any plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I don't know if that's an issue, but if you've got a large piece of property and you can keep it away from the foundation of your house or your sewer or septic line, you know, it would be worth trying, especially if you live in an area where you can grow it. Most people that grow this in the U.S., they're either in Hawaii or Southern Florida. There are a few people, like I said, growing it in Southern California. But it's kind of something that's been overlooked. And I think one of the reasons is it takes so long to produce fruit. I'm going to plant quite a few of them. And there's going to be some that will produce well and some that won't. And you can always graft them. I think in southern Florida you can go to nurseries and buy grafted varieties. Here I don't know of any nurseries that sell them. I guess that's it for right now, isn't that's it? That's it for right now. And oh, real quick, let me ask in case somebody asks. What, how would you compare the tree to a papaya? Are they similar in any way or no? As far as the tree? No, they're totally different. Totally different, so, okay. Yeah, this is an actual tree. A papaya is a... Just herbaceous plant. Okay. All right. I see. I didn't know that. Somebody might have asked. Yeah, someone, someone <laughs> probably will ask. But again, even papaya seeds, they've got to go straight into the ground. You can't let, you can't dry papaya you seeds. No. No fruit. So as long as people remember that, basically your average fruit you think about. Yeah. If you think of nuts, they can be, be out and you can plant nuts. But when it comes to fruit, most fruit, if you plant it as soon as you take it away from the fruit, Okay, well this was great. So now I've, now you can go in the house and start eating it and maybe I'll try it, I don't know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, feel free to subscribe to our channel. If you want to be notified on videos that we're putting up, don't forget to hit the bell insignia. With that, thanks for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye.